I'm Michael Reese. And I'm Woods Davis. And this is the Digital President Podcast. We've cracked the code for generating customers online for every business model. In fact, we wrote the book on it. We built multiple multi-million dollar businesses in as little as 90 days. And the one truth that we discovered is the best business model is doing what you love and living your life by strategy. You truly can follow your passion and create the life of your dreams as long as you have the right strategy. All right, everybody, welcome to episode number 42, Digital President Podcast. We're going to jump right in. Today, we're going to be talking about really a, a conversation that me and Woods have had over the last couple of weeks. It really has to do with what we would consider our tilt. You know, we, we were in preparation of helping other people develop their tilt. If you don't know what that means, we'll let you know here in a second. Well, I guess it probably makes sense to let you know right now. A tilt is really what makes you different, right? It, what decommoditizes you. It, it's really the tilt by definition is a differentiated value proposition, so to speak, maybe another word for it. But we we're having this conversation and today we're going to continue that because it was very interesting. I think um, it's extremely important to understand your tilt, what makes you different. But most importantly, understanding what we have been doing and what, you know, our evolution, where we started from and how we think differently today. And really a nutshell, you know, what's at the heart of the Digital President book, because that is our tilt. So uh, let's jump right in, Woods. I mean, you know, our discussion, obviously, we're doing a, a, a big event here uh, for some uh, private clients. And, you know, it has to do with getting, you know, their their funnel, if you will, up and online and um, rock and roll and optimizing it. And in preparation, you know, of uh, understanding the mindset, the theme of the event and all of that, we came up with Freedom Creator, right? Freedom mm-hmm. Creator. Freedom Creator has obviously a meeting and we went back and forth. So let's let's kind of unpack the, what, what Freedom Creator means and really give them the backstory of, of why, uh, why we believe what we believe today. Well, the whole concept of a freedom creator really was born out of this idea that number one, we've always had what we call as a freedom funnel. And I wouldn't say always, but it's something that we're continually working on. In business, you can create, and we believe that you can have one funnel that you're continually improving, that you're continually um, iterating on to make it perfect, to create a perfect experience to attract strangers and turn them into clients. And so for us, We've, we've always focused on building the funnel. Now, the, the critical pieces of the funnel, and a lot of people, when we talk about building a funnel, that's an exciting concept. They think, okay, yeah, I turn on this magic machine and then it, you know, it, 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 we run ads and things and we get traffic. And then at the end of the rainbow, it spits out a client. And when done correctly, that does kind of happen, but there are some pieces in the middle that really make that work. One of the biggest components of making a freedom funnel work, making a funnel work is creating content and, and leveraging strategic content in order to build a relationship with people in order to move them closer and closer to becoming a client. And the idea of, of being a creator, somebody who adds value, the whole goal of a funnel is is to add so much value to people throughout the process of getting introduced to you, getting introduced to what you have to offer, and then ultimately giving them an offer to actually become a client that they can't help but want to do business with you. And so the whole idea of a freedom creator, for at least in, in my mind, is that you are somebody who wants to add massive amounts of value to people up front in order to, um, you know, in order to help them achieve their goals, and ultimately that will result in them seeking you out to become a client in order to help them get it all the way to the end zone. Yeah, and one of the things, so a lot of people, you know, kind of give a little, a little bit of color or, or maybe a few principles here, <laughs> and kind of piggybacking off my own question, Woods. I feel like for a long time, when you have the skills in order to create the sale, you look at the people who do not buy as non-clients. And really the strategy of preeminence is adopting a new mindset. And so a new mindset would be, you know, I'm going to, it is my duty to help these people and to actually do it in advance of them becoming a client so that when it is time, you know, I asked you a question yesterday and we were kind of brainstorming. And a lot of the times, guys, you know, when you're writing a book, you have a co-author, a lot of the times um, me and Woods will get on the same page because it's, it's not authentic for me to say something that he doesn't believe in or vice versa. 
And so a lot of the times, you know, we're getting we're getting um, clear on where we're where we're aligned. Right. And that's really what the motivation of digital president was, was, you know, looking at this path of two marketers and being able to, you know, sometimes, you know, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, pay-per-view UCF fight on pause, you know, live, like literally on pause to have a conversation around a concept. And I would tell Woods, I would say, you know, listen, I don't feel happy when I'm incongruent. Happiness for me is congruency. And, and for me as a marketer, incongruency was always understanding the concept of the free line. The first time I heard it was from Eben Pagan. Um, but it was very popular. It was made popular by, you know, a concept for a lot of people. And the free line was, how do you give stuff in advance of asking for the for the for the customer's business? Right. And and then they had this concept called launching, which, you know, obviously with the launch, there would be, you know, an ad creating interest, bonding and trust, things that happened in between. But there'd be consumption. And so when you got on the phone with somebody that you actually helped, then you were not trying to explain your service, right? And that's that's a critical understanding is that, you know, I think the metaphor we came up with, Woods, just in conversation was deer hunting, right? Like, like you know, one of your responsibilities are one, you know, like, like most people are trying to hunt a specific deer, one deer. And I would say, Intelligent hunters are trying to create the environment in which deers want to be um, by providing things of value like salt, food, water, things that they can consume, things that are they desire that they seek every day. And by doing that, they can simply put themselves in a deer stand and create an environment around them and have deers just come to them versus looking for a very specific individual deer like the the point of failure is singular um when you have an ad that goes to something direct response and creates an opportunity and that opportunity is not a qualified opportunity because you give that lead we call it a lead you give that lead to a salesperson and it's not qualified because that person does not know certain things or doesn't meet a certain um, qualification. We, we, we adopted HubSpot's methodology, which was a marketing qualified lead and a sales qualified lead. And by defining those, when was the relationship of marketing handing off to sales and said differently, digital president's original title was only funnel. We own the domain. We bought it since then. Other people have come up with a concept similar and executed well. But if you look at the domain registration, we had the concept because our our philosophy was always the same. You only need one funnel, but a funnel takes time. It takes um, tweaking. And what we realized is that, in fact, a funnel a funnel might be tied to a specific product, a, a, a specific event. A funnel can be okay. Let's invite this person to a live workshop. Let's use a funnel, a sales page, a landing page. But if they can't come to that event on the 23rd of this month, we might make them an offer to come to an online event and leverage a funnel. But the person that comes six months from now might go through that automatically and have automation and systems that use, you know, technology, if you will, consumption triggers on if they do this, then do that. So but at the same token, once they're in our database, we still have core messaging. We still have a specific primary offer that we're working back from that we're leading everybody to based upon our core promise to the marketplace. And so like doing this, what makes us different is me and Woods had a call with the client, both individual. Woods is as at four and mine, I think, was at 11. And uh, Woods happened to be listening to my version of the call, knowing that he was having a call with this awesome partner later on in the day. And the partner literally was telling me the same problem that everybody else had. And I asked him, I said, do you, can, do you, can, can, can I have your permission to tell you why your problem is going to continue to be the problem and you're trying to manage the present and the future? And I know that you want the answer to be, you know, like singular, but it's not. It's actually going to be taking a shift in what you do. And I went on to tell him that currently his symptoms 
were as a result of being in the chase business for so long that he had no pipeline. And Woods, I think in our conversation, that's what you, you when we were just brainstorming, you were like, yeah, you know, like the benefit is, is that you have a pipeline of people consistently. Like last night, I had someone get in my calendar for today in an hour that wants to talk to me about us partnering together. You know, I had three people the day before. Last Monday, I think I had five in a day. Those people came to me based upon when the time was right for them. You know, what we know is that, you know, we have a certain set of things that we can do to help people. And instead of going out and trying to find that individual, what we do is we produce content that we share that aligns. So again, to this individual, um, I almost said his name that we had a conversation with yesterday. I said, can I have permission to tell you what I would do? And I, he said, yeah. And I said, I told him his symptoms and I said, listen, I would be creating content, but here's the problem, you know, creating content, you have to have a KPI versus a KRI, meaning, you know, at some point you have to put time in your calendar to create assets so customers can find you. Because right now you're looking for customers, but customers can't find you. And so right now, where do people, like if you have a hundred people, you know, 20% of them are going to call their brother, sister, family member, next door neighbor, or the realtor that they already know that, that they, that they are doing business with regardless. So there's segments of the, the total addressable market that, right? The TAM. And there's a certain subsegment who, um, if like my mother, that uh, she just recently put her home on the market. And if she was to sell her home, you would have, she would have said, I'm going to do one of these things. And she's a researcher and she hasn't sold a home in over 10 years, maybe longer. I would say maybe 15 years. So for her, there's things that are completely different today than, than when she did. So she went and, and what she does do is what a lot of us do. She goes to YouTube. So I told this individual, I would go to YouTube if I were you. I would be producing content. Um, and, and I think the, the answer to the question is a creator to create freedom. You have to create assets in the marketplace that provide value so that people can find you and you have the freedom of actually working with people that are actually looking for you, right? When you're in the business of only, you're only looking for people that are looking for you instead of just looking for anybody that will listen to your message, meaning calling a bunch of people and telling them over the phone why they need to listen to you as opposed to publishing a video around something that they really want to know the answer to, which might be, you know, how interest rates impact your buying power or, you know, how to buy down your interest rate um, to build more equity over time, like things that you could put out into that marketplace. And so the creator to create freedom, you have to change your mindset and understand that every invest every day you have the, the, the chance to invest time, right? And you can invest time, uh, looking for your next client, or you can invest time putting content out in the marketplace that over time, you know, if you knew that in order to sell the same amount of homes that you sold last year, all from social media, meaning on average, the last 10 people that did it from YouTube, that sold more homes than you, all coming to them from social media, produced these types of videos, and they got traction at video 48, right? Let's just say that's the number. Then how long would it take you to produce those videos to know that once they were produced, that people would be online looking for problems and come into contact with the information that you provided solutions to because you were creating value. And as of, as the, in the act of creating value, you were actually creating freedom because instead of waking up, not knowing where your next deal came from, you woke up with someone who wanted to talk to you because they watched Mm -hmm. nine of your videos last night. So it's a mindset. What's the cool thing about it is when you adopt that mindset, um, you actually build a system, you know? So it's not just, you know, the random, people that, that run in, bump into your content, that, that happens. I mean, that's an organic thing that happens. And that is actually what you're aiming for ultimately is to be able to build and create content that is valuable to people that they will search out and seek and find on your own. And when they discover you through your content, it's like magic because they usually watch one piece of content and then they get on the the content train and start consuming more and more and more of your content. 
And, but what's also interesting is that you can create and you can construct an environment to where you're feeding and nurturing your database. You have other things you can still use leverage direct response. You can run ads. You can go seek out and try to find those people that you're looking for. And I think, I think one of the points, I think one of the points of reference here, Woods, is what we came up with. And this is where you know, we struggle and I, I appreciate you letting me get my point out and I apologize for chiming in, but I want to make this comment is that, you know, what that was scaling, right? We, we, we segmented traffic because being a creator is if you tie the complexity of traffic into your ability to be success, then you have overwhelm and you don't do anything, right? Right. So like, like um, it's an evolution and that's the point is when you install these things into your business, you don't have to have all of the pieces in place. The biggest bottleneck of being a creator is perfectionism, right? It's like not starting. Like what leads to action? Well, for a customer, it's creating an offer so that they can move forward. If you create content on YouTube and you have no offers, then good luck to you, right? Right? You have to be able to have offers that you can make to people. But what I feel like you're saying, Woods, is that and this is an important distinction based upon just the gentleman we spoke to yesterday. And, and I think that most people's creator creating freedom is that they don't have a system for knowing what to talk about because they haven't identified their core pillars and subject subjects. And instead of complicating it and trying to solve for step D, the question is, is, how do you understand the difference between being in a business where you're actually creating freedom versus being in a business that you don't know where your next deal is coming from, right? And you, what you're saying is, is that you can build your audience faster by having lead magnets in the marketplace, by having more offers to liquidate that traffic strategy. But at the same token, you want to build a relationship with all of those people and to build that relationship you are number one responsible. No different than me and Woods just woke up this morning. We both worked out. We came together and we said, we are creating content right now. We are making a deposit into the marketplace before we do an assortment of all the other things that we need to do. Why? Because there's people out there right now that, you know, are on the fence and they're frustrated. They don't know where their next deal is coming from. And we just talked to a client yesterday who had the same frustration and me and Woods both agreed with the prescription. But that that individual's number one threat, if you give it to 100 people, is he's not creating value in advance. That's the threat because he needs a deal today and he has this yeah. gap. And so he's stuck in transactional world and in transactional world, funnels are the best. That's how we started. That's how we live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you layer on the content, it's the increase in conversion and optimization that makes everything else better from the first conversation to the conversion of all your offers. Well, what's really interesting is if you try to scale funnels and scale advertising before you start creating content and creating a system to add value to people once they've become a lead, you're going to actually experience overwhelm. You said you, you, you got to hit your quote that I wrote down yesterday. You had the best quote yesterday of frustration. Remember, I wrote it down. Oh, man, I can't remember. You'll have to remind me. What was it? It, it was about uh, what frustrates them is they see it at scale. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, what frustrates people is that they see marketing funnels and they see other people executing at scale and they see such a far gap between where they are and somebody else executing at scale that they think that the answer is again to start scaling scaling ads start getting these these things everywhere and they, and it becomes overwhelming because they think like man how can i get all of this content out how can i get all of these pieces out all over the place and the reality is is you can really start with one. You can start with one funnel. You can start with one core message and one core type of client and then create the content. It's about going deep. It's not about going shallow. It's not about doing a thousand things. It's about doing one thing a thousand times better than everybody else. And, and what, what happens when you do that, again, you're creating a system. It's a system. 
it, I love the deer hunter analogy because what most people do is they want to go out, they grab their gun, they see the deer, they run and they start chasing it. Well, it, well no, no, no. First, first of all, first of all, they, their belly rumbles and they realize they're hungry. Then they grab the gun. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're hungry. So they see the deer. Yeah. And they're off to the races, right? Man, I'm going to run this thing down, whatever the heck it takes to run it down. And what they realize is they ain't faster than the deer. <laughs> the deer is going to outrun you. And it only take, and then it takes that process repeating itself time after time. And what happens is you get tired. In fact, but what, what, what also happens though, is every once in a while you catch a deer because you catch one deer who the timing's right. And they're either injured or they're tired or they're distracted or whatever the case is. And you get one and you're like, oh, I can eat, I can eat. And then you go do it again. And so you never take the time to, first of all, figure out what do the deer like? Do the deer like to eat the salt? Are they attracted to that? I'm going to go buy the salt. I'm going to go get the corn and I'm going to lay out the corn kernels. I'm going to go buy the deer urine because they're attracted to the scent of, of that. And they, and it, they think that that's going to lead to mating season. I'm going to set up a deer stand up here from a, where I can see, see them and they can't see me like all of that preparation in order to get all that set up. But guess what the experience is like the experience of going and chasing a deer running through the woods and wearing yourself out is so much different than once you've got everything set up, sitting in a tree stand comfortably and waiting and waiting for the actual deer to come to you. And that's the experience that, that, that you can have, but it does take the work. And I can tell you right now that the most important piece of, of, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say the most important cause you, you actually need all of the things, you know, you need the gun, you need bullets in the gun, you need the funnel, you need, you need all of these pieces, but the content that comes in between and the, and the mentality that I'm going to be a value creator, I'm going to be an attractor, I'm going to give people um, value in advance. Uh, that's really, you know, the, the core mindset that you have to have. Uh, because if you start running ads, man, you start generating too many leads up front, you start, you know, doing all this stuff again, you're going to just, you can get stuck in that chase cycle. And even worse, you can even start to feel a, you can start to feel successful um, when you've got, you know, tons of leads, tons of conversations. But if you don't have a system in order to get them to the end zone, you're only going to capture a fraction. And I always tell the story. There's so like I tell the two stories. There's two stories of two partners that that we onboarded literally at the same time. One um, on the same exact budget, they got basically 1% conversion. One out of every, out of every hundred leads that they generated, um, they turned into a client, which was still actually phenomenal. Um, results in terms of ROI and everything else. But at the end of the day, after six months, she closed six deals, same exact person, same exact budget. And I would say even more difficult circumstances, the person actually took the time to be a value creator. They leveraged that mindset. When new leads came in, they shot videos for them. When, that, when, when they initiated new conversations, they sent them videos. They sent them to their YouTube channel. They sent them to their playlist to consume content. They added value through content and the results were literally triple. So they tripled the amount of transactions they closed over that same time. It was um, almost triple, it was 17, right? So, you know, it doesn't take a rocket science to, to, to do the math, but what it does take is it takes focus um, and, and it really a mindset shift to want to take the time to add value to people up front, knowing and having, and, and having the faith that, um, you know, if you do the, if you add more value to people up front, then ultimately they're going to want to choose you and become a client. Yeah. And that's, that's what it comes down to. And that's what we're really excited about. We're excited about, you know, helping people who want to attract. I mean, that's, that's probably at the core nucleus of this is that, you know, there's symptoms to people who chase and there's, you know, the best day to start doing attraction for your real estate business, for buyers, for sellers, for growing your real estate brokerage was yesterday. The next best thing is today. And the reason why you won't do it is because you don't have a plan. And the plan has to be simple and uh, believable and realistic. And so, you know, part of what we're doing uh, is we're doing an actual first live event, Freedom Creator event here in Puerto Rico, where we've invited a handful of, uh, again, private clients. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, in prep. And the reason why we like doing events, events in general, 
you know, there's going to be a lot of great content that comes through that organizing yourself, creating that content um, for people and, and, and having to codify, you know, what it is that make you makes you different. All of those things are, are great exercises. And what I want to what I want to what I want to end with is that, you know, in my belief, you know, you want to be good at both because being good at funnels allows you to play the long content game, right? You can squeeze more uh, juice from the lemon. You don't have to be as committed as far as you don't have to put as many videos out in order to see success. So funnels actually help bridge the gap. I will say that the holy grail is once you've adopted this mindset, no different than someone going into the gym and deciding, hey, you know what? I'm actually, this is gonna become a lifestyle. Once it becomes a lifestyle, like the the goals in which somebody sets for themselves when they first wanna just lose weight versus someone who actually makes a change in their lifestyle, like this becomes who they are, it's part of their identity. When you do that and you're in the business like some of my friends and they're like, hey, listen, to me, every video I produce is worth $8,000 um, at some point in the next 12 months in the future. Because if you divide the amount of videos I produce and the income I've made, that's that's the value of that. And for them, the gap is believing that's going to happen and work versus actually having the experience and knowing. And in order to bridge that gap when you're having to rely on belief having a marketing funnel and something to leverage with that so you can make a clear offer to people in your content. You know, the first thing is making your content and getting over yourself and getting out of your head and reorganizing, you know, what stories you're saying about yourself that might even actually seem like it's not ego, but really is ego. If you reframe what you're saying, like, I don't want to be on, I'm not that type of person. I don't do that, blah, blah, blah. But it's really, you know, if you really take a few peel back the other get a few pieces, there's really an ego problem there. Because at the end of the day, the preeminent mindset, the, you know, the, the, the freedom creator, they don't care whether it's one person or 30 people, you know, they get fulfillment knowing that what they provided to the marketplace was value, valuable. And somebody just like me is going to go on YouTube and ask how to take out my kin more drawer in my refrigerator, you know, serial number XY937. And there's going to be a video of someone who was like, oh my gosh, that was difficult. Didn't really see that little thing in the back there underneath the little lid that you have to almost broke that thing off. Glad this video was here. Glad someone took the time to help me with this video. Right. And so they have those things out there. I know you guys have witnessed them. You've, you've received value from them in advance. Think about how you can create value for somebody else. And um, at the end of the day, the, the mindset we have is how do we create as much value for one person and do it to as many people as possible so we can live a life by strategy.